Well, hey everybody. This is an interesting video here. This is kind of a fruit hunting emergency uh, at the last minute. There is wild squash growing here on the side of the road. And uh, I'm right here on the side of the road. Here's the vine and here's the squash right here. If you check it out, this is what they look like. Now squash do grow wild in Missouri, Tennessee, Kentucky, and this is pretty neat. Look at this. This is a treat. This is a real treat right here, guys. Four. There's another one. And they go all the way up this tree. If you can look up there, 15, 20 feet up, there's squash up there. All the way in the top of the tree up there. And there's actually a rotten one over here too. Oh, look where a couple of them fell. I gotta get this. Wow, check this out. Look at the long stem on this, guys. This is a wild native variety of squash fruit. Look at the long stem. Just growing wild here along the side of the road. And uh, this is pretty cool, guys. This is pretty cool. I'm going to look into this a little bit more. I know that there are wild varieties, and Native Americans used to grow them around here hundreds, if not thousands of years ago. And uh, it's one of the only things that is known for uh, the United States. Natural de domestication by Native Americans. Summer squash growing all the way up the trees. So I'm going to go check this out and uh, get back to you guys. Well hey everybody, we're going we're gonna to go over there again. Um, it's been a couple days since the last video or the last little uh, snippet that I've done. And I've actually went and talked to the neighbors and um, they said that I can go over there and, and pick those. So, so I modified my pawpaw stick for picking pawpaws, <coughs> which is uh, just a broomstick handle with a PVC four-way. Uh, attached to it. And I just pushed it in there. I didn't have to glue it or nothing like that. And I took a five foot piece of PVC and I took my Dremel down here. If you can see that right there. I kind of ground it down with my Dremel and made like a little hook to snag it. And uh, this is just half inch PVC. So we're going to go over there and uh, see if we can get some more. Uh, I thought I saw about four or five more in a little tiny guy on the side so well, let's go walk down there all right well here we are back there and uh, you can see him hanging all the way up there in the tree up there right there and these ones are actually yellow uh, they're not striped like the last ones as you can see and here's the vine growing up there I mean I'm not these are growing here and this is actually in a shady spot there's no sunlight here you can see the sunlight over there that direction over that way south so this is completely shaded out less than ideal conditions so you know they'll do good and I'm gonna pick that guy right there check that out Let's try to get these tall ones up here now. All right, I'm going to put the camera down. All right, well, I just got back from down there, and uh, I got three of them, and I walked back and showed them to the neighbors, and they've never grown them before. Um, they'd never seen them before. They thought it was a pawpaw, and I was like, no, they're not pawpaws. They're a type of wild squash slash gourd, you know. You say gourd, people kind of understand what you're talking about. 
but um, here's the three that I got and uh, this has been a pretty cool fruit hunting video I gotta say I really enjoyed doing this when I seen these I freaked out and you could see in the beginning of the video how I was like you know could barely breathe and everything but um, I'm pretty sure these were all in the same vine they all look really similar um, these guys here have got the stripes uh, you know the ones that I just got don't little ridges bumps um, there might have made there may have been maybe a couple different vines uh, but they all still look pretty similar and these actually look like the Tennessee spinning gourds that you see on Baker Creek uh, Baker Creek Seed Company they offer these and they look like the little green spinning gourds just fully mature if you can imagine now these don't have as long of a stem as these guys do um, but these guys I think these ones here ripened more earlier in the season in the heat in the summer and just kind of hung on there and then these were kind of later on but I don't know I'm gonna grow them all together uh, I'm not really gonna separate them versus looks and everything because they all came from the same spot and they all look pretty similar um, but that's pretty cool I'm gonna grow a bunch of these I'm not going to change up their growing conditions from what I, where I found them. I'm still going to grow them in like a brush type of area, let them grow up trees. But I'm going to give them um, some more sunlight and hopefully some better soil and uh, see what happens. And hopefully get some bigger ones. And I'm pretty sure these are probably going to be the only squash I'm going to be growing from now on. That's pretty cool. Wild squash, guys. I'm going to put a link down below in the description. Um that I that I just recently stumbled on and there's a there's a squash is native to the United States it's indigenous and Native Americans actually domesticated these and uh, there was a expedition to the Ozark Mountains um, that the Smithsonian led and they actually discovered a wild species of summer squash the ancestor of today's modern summer squash that you grow in your garden and uh, it's called Cucurba de Pipo Variation Ovifera Species Ozarkana. And uh, because they found it from the Ozark Mountains, they named it Species Ozarkana. Now, um, Cucurba de Pipo Ovifera is what they call common gourds. You know, those ornamental gourds that you see for sale uh, to decorate during Thanksgiving and Halloween and everything like that. Um, and the reason why it's called ovifera it's because it's uh, looks like an egg an ovary think ovary ovifera egg and um, that's pretty cool but yeah Ozarkana is a wild they found wild populations of them growing in isolated areas in the Ozark mountains and we're in the same climate same region same area Native Americans that were here were also over there they I'm, I'm not too far from Missouri and from the Ozark mountains um, so who knows this, this could be a a garden escape, something that escaped from a garden, or a wild species of squash that's native to this area. Either way, it grows great. <laughs> nobody watered it, nobody planted it. Um, there's a there's a good bit of little squash here. You know, my summer squash I planted this year did horrible. It did it was dismal. It didn't do hardly anything. And yet here there is right down the street, wild summer squash growing up a tree. You know, nature's always giving you signs. It's just you gotta, you gotta see it. You know, and obviously they're hard right now. But when you get them when they're young, and they just start to start growing, they're just like summer squash. I bet. So, thanks for watching, guys. Um,